Now there are many lessons to be learned through your journey in e-commerce and I'm going to be sharing with you the 10 most important lessons I've learned in the last year or so after generating just over $5 million in sales on my Shopify business. Now yes, some people do inflate their numbers on YouTube for views and things like that, but there's one way you can do this without faking it. Now I'm literally just doing this because I want to show you this pretty cool thing in the background here. I got this from Shopify's official store. It's a sales count it can display any number that is linked with your Shopify store. Very quickly jumping into my screen here, you can see the different sorts of data it can provide. So we switch to last 365 days here, click save, you'll see that number changing to $5,182,253 in sales. So as you can see there, pretty cool, but let's jump in to today's video. Okay, whilst that's quickly changing back to today's revenue, the first lesson I wanna discuss today is outsourcing. Now for honestly three to four years of my dropshipping and e-commerce journey, I would not outsource anything. I would manage customer service myself, fulfilling orders manually on AliExpress sometimes, you know, copy and pasting customers' addresses and things like that. It took forever and it was only until I'd say about 18 months ago I started to hire people to help me with my business it first started with customer service I now have three customer service employees full-time for my business I have a finance and fulfillment manager as well who keep on top of everything to ensure that I'm paying the correct amount in my invoices from my supplier the fulfillment manager makes sure everything is shipped on time it helps me identify perhaps any return to sender packages helps me identify perhaps if an item is lost in transit and this is extremely important because we can act on these issues before the customer sends us an email and complains essentially so let's say an order is lost in transit five days after we ship it instead of waiting for the customer to contact us my fulfillment manager will already have identified this issue and a new shipment will already be issued to that customer before a problem can even arise and before a complaint is even started those are just a few examples of the people that now are part of my team and the reason I did all of this was to free up more of my time as I scaled the business I couldn't scale really any further because I was finding that I was spending too much time on what what wasn't important to me so I started to hire free up more of my time and it would allow me to scale and focus my attention on what I am good at which is marketing but hiring isn't the easiest thing in the world you can hire too soon you can hire too late you can hire too many people have too many costs going out you need to find the right balance and the way I like to put it is trying get some help in hands before for example a problem becomes serious let's say you face so many customer service issues instead of last minute panic hiring someone make sure you've already got a team in place to prevent these sorts of issues so essentially the point is don't wait until it's too late to hire help for your business because trust me in the long run it is so worth the investment now another important lesson I learned is going to be the organic presence of my business online everyone loves free traffic it's literally a no-brainer if you're not sure how to optimize your SEO presence presence you can always hire again linking back to point one you can hire an seo expert this isn't necessarily an ongoing cost it could be a one-time thing for them to tweak things in your back end on your site to give you better presence on google being any search engine that's going to generate free traffic for you yes these sorts of things with seo and free traffic take time it takes time to rank your pages higher in google searches but for example this business here is four to five years old now so i get plenty of traffic from organic and when that free traffic converts into a sale that is a new customer i acquiring without paying any money on advertising to acquire them now not something you necessarily immediately need to do but this is a lesson I learned again I did some tweaking myself last year and already noticed an improvement I believe I've got a video on my channel as well about how to improve your SEO presence and organic presence on Google I think if you just go on my channel and search the phrase free traffic you'll probably see it. I think it's my most viewed video now moving on to number three and that is going to be product imagery and the way you present your products on your website I have so many people in my comments DMs and things like that. They'll send me a link to their store. I've said this before. It is just a cheap, nasty looking dropshipping store with images ripped straight from AliExpress. They're terrible quality, blurry. They even have watermarks over them of the AliExpress seller's store. This isn't going to work. I think even in 2016, this wouldn't work because it's so poor quality. So again, invest in perhaps a photographer, a studio. Me personally with this business, I have a studio that works with my fulfillment agent in China. If we ever need new content 
for our products. We just send them a bunch of our products, describe what sort of images we want. And it takes about 10 days for them to turn around, do it, provide the images back to us, but they're extremely high quality. They're unique for my business because they're supplied for me and me to use only. They're not going to be published on AliExpress or any other website. So you'll own the rights to these images as well. And not only that, if you're recycling the same images and even videos over and over again on your TikTok or Facebook ads, eventually performance is going to dip. You can't run the same ad forever and ever because of saturation, because of frequency and things like that, it will decline. So freshly pumping new content into your marketing stream is extremely important. And without creating new content, you're going to have no new content to promote. So that is something extremely important to consider. It's not only beneficial for the appearance and look of your website, but in terms of your marketing efforts and keeping those results coming in, it is very important as well. Okay, number four is going to be something that links into the next few points. And that is a little phrase I like to say, and that is sacrificing short term profits for long term gains. Now this again links actually back to me hiring in point number one, I almost held back too long with hiring because I didn't want that extra added expense for my business. I was so focused on my daily profit and what I was making each day that I literally viewed it as okay, if I hire someone for $10 an hour for six hours work a day, that $60 is going to come out of my profit each day. I didn't think about the fact it's going to free up a load more time for me to help grow my business. I was just so zoned in and focused on just literally the bottom line profit of each day. And that is one of the main reasons that took me ages to hire. Now, I'll talk a bit more about email marketing in later on in this video. But a good example of this is I hired an email marketing expert towards the end of last year. He already has generated three quarters of a million dollars for me with email. Yes, it's quite expensive, but it's extremely helpful. The ROI on what I pay him in comparison to what it generates me is just, it's a no brainer. And again, three, four years ago, I would never have outsourced or hired someone to manage email marketing for me because I was so focused on, okay, I'm not going to pay him that amount of money because that's going to come out of my profit. I didn't see the bigger picture and the fact it's going to get me a huge return. I was just so focused on that profit on a day to day basis. Now, point number five is going to be the minute changes that can make a big difference over time. Now, a great example of this is this business is a US based business. US dollar is obviously the currency of my store. I'm in the United Kingdom. So my payouts have to get converted from US dollars to great British pounds before I can receive the Shopify payouts in my bank account. Now on this conversion, this currency conversion process, there is a 2% currency conversion fee. And that 2% over the last 365 days equates to just over $110,000 in currency conversion fees that I have lost. If I was able to eliminate that 2%, that is an extra 110k profit in one year just by eliminating a 2% small change. Now I'm keeping my fingers crossed at the time of making this video is currently not possible for British Shopify owners to receive payouts in US dollars. But, but one of my contacts at Shopify informed me this is something that is going to come soon hopefully q4 this year i've been proactive i've now got a us dollar bank account ready which will then hopefully when shopify update their back end will allow me to receive us dollar payouts and i can completely miss that two percent currency conversion fee so the point here is it's sometimes important to sit back look at the smaller things because this example here those smaller percentages i know at this scale it's going to be a lot but even if you're doing significantly less than this a few changes where you save one or two percent here and there could be extremely beneficial to your bottom line. Now, another good example is I upgraded to Shopify Plus in October last year. And just by switching to Shopify Plus, I get a better rates on my credit card processing fees. It's less than 0.5%. But again, over a year, that less than 1% saving is huge on, you know, when you're doing multi millions of dollars in revenue. Now, point number six is going to be that it's not always going to be smooth sailing. Issues are going to arise. But again, link it back to hiring. If you've got people to help you, you'll get through these situations a lot quicker with less you know, financial burden, for example, a great example is Q4 last year, I had a huge issue with some shipments, we ended up having to reship over 500 orders just before Christmas, as you can imagine, customer service was popping off, it was incredibly stressful. But imagine had I not hired people, I would be managing that myself, we were getting hundreds of emails on a daily basis because of this, but we were able to resolve calm these customers down, we reshipped orders literally immediately as soon as we identified these issues. Again, 
again, the importance of having a team and a good trusted supplier in place as well helped me resolve this issue as quickly as we could with minimal refunds and minimal complaints. Whereas I know if issues like this happen to a one man band store, it could literally close their business. So it won't always be smooth sailing, but again, linking this point back to number one, hiring, having a good trusted team will get you out of any sticky situation that comes your way. Okay, number seven, email marketing. Like I said, I hired an expert. I'm gonna keep this short and simple. Three quarters of a million dollars in email marketing revenue since October last year. Now I'm just on my Clavio account. I'm quickly gonna show you. I think I even showed it in my last video, but just showing you the importance of email marketing. So if we do the 1st of October to present day. So let that update. So like I said before, this was something that I kind of managed myself before. Didn't really, you know, I sort of set it up and left it. I maybe sent a campaign out once every six weeks or so. Looking after this for me, you can see $825,000 of revenue, almost a million dollars of revenue just from emails since October last year, which is just incredible. And as you scale your business, it is so important to have because advertising, yes, is becoming more expensive. It's becoming more expensive to acquire customers now. We all know that it's getting more challenging. And essentially the people that win on the front end are the people that can pay most to acquire a customer. Now, I could probably afford to pay more to acquire a customer than you know other stores or businesses that perhaps do less and that is because I've got such a optimized email back end that I generate so much extra revenue you know increasing the AOV increasing the customer lifetime value bringing in more repeat customers and you know the proofs right here in these numbers you know some email agencies are quite cheap and if it's something you've not got in place at all do it and set it up yourself if you're limited with costs but if you're doing let's say 50 100k a month and you're not hiring an expert or a team to manage this for you then you know speaking from experience you're truly making a big mistake i wish i'd done this two three years sooner but again linking back to obviously previously in this video i took too long to hire and outsource simple as that but better late than never if you're not putting 100 percent into email marketing then you really are missing out okay point number eight is going to be customer experience now this is something i'm focusing a lot on this year we're starting to send even more of our SKUs over to us warehouses to improve the shipping time for a higher percentage of our orders now because i've got quite a large catalog of products it's not really feasible and it doesn't really make sense to have 100% of my products in the US because some products for example may sell 10 times a month so it's not really worth sending three four hundred units over to America but we're working hard to arrange all of this and ensure around 80% of our products are going to be stocked in US warehouses that obviously improves the shipping time for US customers also with this it allows us to use better packaging custom boxes things like that we're going to start to include free gifts into some of our higher ticket items you know you're increasing that overall perceived value of the product the order your brand even other little touches like customizing your plastic packaging that perhaps is inside the cardboard box you know adding leaflets or promotional inserts into packages that you know entice customer to perhaps place another order with a secret discount code that you've given them there are so many things you can do just think perhaps if you order off your favorite brand do they include anything sort of unique in their packages how is it presented is their custom logos everywhere just overall little things that do improve the you know overall customer experience and the perceived value of your brand so that is a big focus this year now nine and ten sort of merge into one and that is going to be mindset now i truly think mindset is the most important thing with scaling a business once i got past the fact that i you know stopped focusing on just my daily profit and stopped getting you know worried about spending x amount of day on ads once i pushed past that barrier i can launch a campaign on facebook now at two thousand pounds a day and not worry at all because i always tell myself what is the worst that can happen i mean two thousand pound a day may be a bit excessive but let's say a 500 pound a day new facebook campaign testing a new product what's the worst that can happen i leave it for three days it maybe gets a couple of sales i make a loss on that campaign but that's the worst that can happen it's not an ongoing expense that you're going to make a loss of 500 pound every day it is the sacrifice you're making in the short term to learn to gather data to run a test on a new product that you may or may not know works and you'll never know without running that test now this can literally apply for everything what's the worst that can happen you hire an email marketing agency for example what is the worst that can happen it's pretty likely they're going to come in there change up your email flows launch some campaigns it will make you some extra revenue and again we're going back to the question what's the worst that can happen once they've set it all up you could you know part ways three months down the line you're not then paying that monthly bill anymore but you've 
now got an established back-end email marketing system that you've paid someone to build and long term it will generate and continue generating revenue for your business so I like to say to anyone if they're doubting anything business related in their business a decision that they're not sure whether to say yes to or no to and this can be or oh, I don't know whether to launch this CBO on Facebook I don't know whether to launch this Google Ads campaign just ask yourself what is the worst that can happen so guys I hope you found this video interesting useful insightful if you've got any questions about my experience with business or anything business related drop a comment down below if you need an expert Google Ads agency to manage and scale your Google Ads for you I'll leave a link to my Google Ads agency in the description down below but other than that thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in my next video